How's it going, people? I'm doing pretty well. Fires are out up here in Butte County. They remained north to me, so I wasn't too concerned, but close enough. And we got fresh air up here now. Ah. <sighs> Long week. Time to recreate. And maybe a little spiritual exploration. As agreed, Jesus is coming, perhaps today. And this is, you know, a Mennonite uh, take on this. Okay, and they repeat the title inside, but we don't need to. Um, one of the oldest of all Christian documents is a letter the Apostle Paul sent to the church that now lies in northern Greece. In it he stated, For this we say unto you, By the word of the Lord, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. You know, outer space. <laughs> With a shout. With the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And, end quote, from 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, and 16. So, that's important somehow. Let's find out how. Uh, a staggering claim. How could a mortal man dare to make it? Well, lots of mortal men dare to make such claims and they get followers and money and free nookie and charity everywhere. It's a risky business, but if you're a con artist, uh, bold claims is what you do. All right, uh, read again the first words quoted. So we're repeating ourselves? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Paul was not expressing his own opinion. He used the royal we. You know, like in the Quran and parts of uh, the Old Testament. Where one person speaks for all. So they pluralize. Uh, for over... Two, wait, oh, 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 almost went ahead here. Um... He was not expressing his own opinion. He was writing by direct inspiration from God himself. The first astronaut. Ancient astronaut. <sighs> For over 2,000 years, Christians have been expecting the return of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And not only because of the passage quoted above, during his public ministry, Jesus himself spoke about his second coming. And that was going to happen any moment. Uh, and still is. And still will be. Until people stop believing this shit. And start believing some other crazy crap. Who knows? I mean, humankind has done that before. All right. For instance, while speaking to a small group of his disciples near the end of his earthly life, Jesus said, supposedly, um, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And that's uh, Mark 13, 26, 27. <sighs> Apparently only there, I guess. Yes, Jesus' is coming will mean glory for the saints. But it will mean judgment for those who are not prepared. 
the Lord Jesus Christ, and then there's dot, 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 possible lacuni, shall judge the quick, parentheses living, and the dead at his appearing. 2 Timothy 4.1 Judgment is a word that many people nowadays do not want to hear. Because we are told, judge not. <laughs> yes. They find it dis distasteful. <coughs> Me too. Uh, they prefer a, quotations, uh, values free, in quotations, way of thinking and living whereby each individual decides for himself what is right or wrong. Oh, well, you can do that up to a point if you factor in empathy. Your understanding that your experiences as a human being are probably not dissimilar to others in all the basics, like, you know, hot, cold, you know, uh, comfort, pain, happiness, fear, misery, we all need to know about this, and we kind of wish somebody could do something about it, but they can't because the world's unfair. But we don't have to be unfair just because everything else is. I mean, we defy nature all the time with our minds. Oh, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, got off track. Uh, yeah, they decide for themselves right and wrong. Such an attitude is far from biblical. And Jesus promoted nothing like it. He taught that only those who do his Father's will will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7.21 Note well, his Father's will, not his own. Okay, what does that mean? Please pray tell. And where is God's will found? Not in public opinion polls or television talk shows or in newspaper editorials, but in his own word, the Bible, and probably Fox News and 700 Club, maybe. Um, just helping. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 what will this judgment be like? Hear Jesus' own words. Here they are. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the <coughs> throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheets from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then he shall, wait, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit his kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world, dot, dot, dot. Then shall he say unto you, wait, say unto them on the left hand, them goats, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, dot, dot, dot. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal, end quotes. Matthew 25, 31 through 34, then they skip to 41, then they skip to 46. Hence the dot, dot, dots. <sighs> Some people might like to dismiss such words. <laughs> Others might prefer to interpret them to mean something else. But such individuals are only fooling themselves. 
They're just being too casual. Jesus said exactly what he meant. He did not mince words. He wasn't a mincy kind of guy. His return will be just as he described it. He's going to come from the clouds. I hope he means that as in his whole self. <laughs> I mean, I just hate to think it got really rainy one day. Uh, two questions, therefore, need to be answered. First, when? Many people have tried to predict the exact date of Christ's return. All have failed miserably. <laughs> the simple fact is that no one knows when he will return. When Jesus was here on earth, he said, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, capitalized, but the Father. Mark 13, 32. It could happen years hence, but it could also happen today. It could have happened 15 minutes ago, and you just haven't stepped outside to see all those empty wardrobes laying on the sidewalk. Or it happened and no one was good enough, maybe. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when, parenthesis, he, in parenthesis, cometh. Not even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, a little later I guess, less suddenly, uh, less coming suddenly will find you sleeping, and I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Mark 13, 35 through 37. Another quotation. Uh, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in a night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them, dot, dot, dot. And they shall not escape. <clears throat> and quotes, um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, and 3. This event could happen before you finish reading these words, then never mind. <clears throat> I guess you can read them. You'll still be around. You go, oh, shit. Tribulation, huh? And this brings up the second question. Are you ready? Are you prepared to stand before his throne and be judged? Read what awaits the unprepared. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Dot, dot, dot. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars <laughs> shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone in quote, Revelation 2015. And in a little break, and, and it's 21 uh, 8. So, hence a little cuny, I guess. The image is almost too horrifying to fully quote it. It'll leave part of it out. Uh, too horrifying to, th to think upon. Small wonder that so many people prefer to dismiss it from their minds. But those who do are sealing their own doom. The unbelieving are among those consigned to hell. Now, 
You can avert such a fate by accepting the salvation that Jesus himself offers. It's basically this. <laughs> Symbolically. And then you get to eat his body and drink his blood. Okay. Uh, you can avert a fate by accepting his salvation that Jesus himself offers. Confess your sins to him and allow him to enter your heart and give you a new heart, a heart transplant, and a new spirit, new soul. Jesus is willing to receive anyone who repents. John 6.37 So, enjoying heaven, Ted Bundy? <laughs> and Hitler and all those other people? I mean, just pull the ripcord at the last minute if you're lucky. I don't know. Could work. With magical thinking, anything's possible. Then you will be ready to stand before him when he comes to judge the living and the dead. Jesus Christ will indeed come. And he could come today. Come to him today. Lest he come to find you unprepared. And that's, uh, that's the end of that. I don't know about you, but uh, that could have been scary. If you believe that sort of shit. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you learned something. Maybe you've got a new heart and a new spirit right now. Thanks to me. Well, you're welcome. Stay tuned. Peace. The fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. <laughs>